Hi, welcome. This is a presentation on Northern Star Resources. And to give you a little bit backstory on this presentation, I've got to tell you about, you know, one of the presentation that I've pitched uh, three months ago on, um, you know, sand fire resources. If you remember correctly, I've presented a case where the company was undervalued and you should just go right ahead and buy the stock. Since then, the company has, you know, the trade seems to be very successful where, you know, I've gained more than 20% of the upside benefit. And to try to replicate that success story, I thought, you know, why not try to present another mining company in Australia, which in this case is Northern Star Resources. So these are the contents that I'm going to cover today. And the executive summary here shows that the company ultimately is undervalued. So the current situation here, the company Northern Star Resources was founded in 2000 in Western Australia. The, it is a gold, um, gold mining company that produces and explores gold mines ac across the globe. It has footprints in Australia and, and in North America. And its most recent M&A event was its merger with Saracen Mineral in 2021 where the deal was valued at $5.76 billion. Financially, the company generates 80% of its revenue in Australia and 20% in North America. As it stands today, the company has, uh, has a market capitalization of close to $11 billion. And we can see that its revenue growth over the past four years, three years, I mean, averaged out at 40%, which is very high in this industry. This is a visual representation of where its global operations are operated in. We can see that Yandao, three, three of the uh, major, uh, major operations are located globally, where the Yandao mine and Calgary operations are stationed in Australia, in Western Australia. And the remaining, the, the last one, the third uh, major mine is located in the North America in Alaska, the Pogo mine. So this slide is just to show you the major events that had occurred um, over the past decade, especially on its um, merger and acquisition. We can see that in 2010, the company has acquired, uh, had acquired uh, Paulson's mine, and in 2014, it acquired the Jandi mine. From 2018 all the way up to 2021, the company has acqu had acquired the uh, Pogo mine, Kalgoorlie operation, took full control over the Thunderbox and Karasue Dam from Saracen uh, Mineral. So let's talk about the positive things that is going to help benefit the company moving forward into the future. The first here is, of course, the demand for gold. Historically, gold was used as a medium of exchange where coins were minted in gold and you know were utilized in transaction were, were utilized for transaction. As of late in, in this present day, gold is seen as an investment product or and an or a store of value. Most of the demand for gold comes directly from the central banks around the world where they, you know, they increase, they buy uh, gold bullion as financial reserves. The increasing gold reserves held by central banks are more significant in the emerging market countries in the past two decades, where China and India at that period have been increasing their gold reserves, growing in tandem with their economic growth. The second demand comes directly from the ETFs provider like BetaShare and BlackRock. They have exchange traded fund products that is, you know, that directly links to gold. And so they have to buy physical gold to back against the product. The third demand comes from the household where, you know, historically and also up to now, and even moving forward into the future, the Household is going to, is continue will continue to buy you know gold jewelry for their maybe for their for presents for weddings for you know for personal uses but that is not going to change and it and that means that the the demand for gold is going to stay 
going to stay consistent moving forward into the future, which is, which is a good thing for the company. Talking specifically about the internal thing, like you know, the company specific uh, factor, because of its you know, aggressive merger and acquisition that it has been conducting over the past five years, it has now you know, a broad range of, of um, gold mine portfolios around the world. We can see that in 2019, the company has produced um, you know, more than 500,000 of gold per ounce, but that more than triple, uh, I mean, close to triple uh, in 2021, where you know, it produces uh, close to 1.5 million ounces of gold. Most of its mine uh, you know, operating as an, as an underground mining. And we can see that the grade for, those, for, the, for underground mining gold is when a very high grade of underground mining gold is when it reaches 1.5 or more grams, um, you know, the head grade of the gold must reach 1.5 or more. And in 2019, the company average head grade for those gold is around 2.2 grams per ounce, which signifies that the company has been producing a very high grade of gold um, you know, from its, uh, from its uh, gold mines. And I expect the production to increase when it continue with its, you know, aggressive merger and acquisition and, you know, keeping the quality of the, the, the gold production to be very high, more than 1.5 of the hit grade. As for the competition here, we know that, you know, gold mining has, you know, the industry itself, the gold mining industry in Australia has a very high barriers to entry. You might ask why? Well, think about the you know, exploration cost, the acquisition of gold mines, and also the machinery to operate those mines requires a very high uh, startup cost for smaller companies. So we don't expect you know, a new entrance to be a significant uh, threat to Northern Star resources. As it stands today, the company has, you know, it, it captures 10.6% of the gold mining industry in Australia, the market share itself. And it is the second largest um, gold producer um, in Australia and sixth largest globally. We expect, I expect this, uh, I expect uh, Northern Star Resources to maintain the level of market share or maybe because of its you know, aggressive uh, merger and acquisition that is going to help increase its production to reach the top spot of the market share in Australia. But, you know, competition is not a threat to, the, to Northern Star Resources, which is a positive thing. So we've talked about the positive factor that is going to help benefit the company moving forward into the future. Now let's, you know, uh, take everything into account and put it into numbers here. From the evaluation analysis here, I've, con I've applied three key valuation metrics. Some, uh, you know, more weights are applied on the forward-looking valuation like the discounted cash flow and also the broker's target. A backward-looking um, valuation like the comparable multiple will be given less weights in the intrinsic value calculations. We can see the green line here shows that the company ultimately is undervalued. At the current share price of $9.41 in you know, uh, December, at the end of December, the company has you know, a more than 30% upside benefit if you start investing uh, right now today. A good thing for, you know, for investors, a positive th uh, trade that is going to help um, generate um, you know, value to the investors. So we've talked about you know, the valuation positive, positive factor that is going to help uh, benefit the company. You might think, you know, are there any risk factor that is going to impact the company into you know, growing its uh, market in the future? There are some, but I don't think it's very, um, you know, very stark or very significant uh, for the company. So now let's look at the risk factor here. We can see, you know, like I've said, I've discussed about the demand is going to stay moderate, it's going to stay consistent, it's not a threat to, to the company. 
competition is not a threat to, to the company. You might say, you know, price, gold price is a, is a threat because a depreciation in the commodity moving forward into the future is going to decrease the revenue uh, for, for the company. Well, the, comp the company can conduct uh, hedging activ activities, which it has been very successful on. And also, you know, the analyst forecast in the next five years expect the gold price to stay, you know, elevated um, at that period. So it is not a threat to the company. But I will say this, the only threat that the, that the company faces, it's its internal uh, factor, its earnings, its financials, its EBIT margin to be specific, because over the past five years, it has underperformed its peers in its EBIT margin. Reason, reason being, it's, it has been registering a very high cost of sales. That is a risk that you know, investors are taking into account where you know, looking at the EBIT margin here, investors can, can say, well, the company is not generating a significant value to investors because of its you know, um, payout on the cost and it can just you know, invest in other peers. Well, because over the, over, over the past five years, we know that the company has been conducting a lot of merger and acquisition, cost will surely be high until the company can produce, you know, evidently in, the, in 2022, 23, the company can produce a, an EBIT margin that is relative to its peers. That is one of the risks that investors are taking, you know, lower earnings, uh, lower margin for the company and hence, you know, potentially hurting earnings or growth moving forward into the future. But that's one of the risks here. To summarize everything here, we expect you know, the company to have uh, to maintain its very strong market power in the industry because of you know, the demand is going to stay consistent, high barriers to entry. And also it has inter the internal stuff here shows that the company can produce a very high grade quality of gold. Until one of the risks here is that, of course, I said it again, the EBIT margin, until it can achieve economic of scale from its current mines, we expect that to be a, a, you know, a significant risk to the company. But taking everything into account, at the end, the company is still undervalued right here. With more than 30% upside benefit, I think it is, it is a good trade for investors to just you know, uh, to, to capitalize on the share price appreciation in 2022 and 23. And that's it for this presentation. I, I hope you enjoy this. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much.